it is finally here and if you are a hot hatch fan this is a great time to be alive because now in america in the u.s we are going to have the focus st the fiesta st the focus rs the civic type r you have the golf gti the golf r you have i'm sure i'm missing some but those are the main ones that come to mind and now we have the 2018 hyundai i30n so this is the first performance car with the N lineup name on it from Hyundai. The N logo represents a chicane, which is considered to be the ultimate corner, and they tested it extensively to make sure this car was stable um, in the most extreme performance driving conditions. But just from a visual perspective looking at this car, it's not it's not an overly aggressive car. I say it fits right in between the GTI and the Focus ST as far as how crazy it is. Um, the front end is very aggressive looking. It has uh, actually working cooling vents, um, you know, right under the fog lights. It's an open grill for the uh, radiator, both or the intercooler, looks yeah, intercooler and the radiator, pretty, um, pretty open there. It just looks nice with the honeycomb, the N badge, the Hyundai logo. It's very clean looking. The lights remind me a lot of the Focus ST. Uh, it also has the black painted mirrors. Um, it just looks, it looks really good. Um, I think for their first performance hatchback, it's not over the top. I think this is a good entry level for them. So uh, now let's get into the, some of the performance specs. Um, this is going to come with rev matching technology. You notice the Civic Type R now has that. And some people will be, you know, mad like, oh, you should be able to do it on your own. And I agree with that, but the thing is you can turn it off. So I think it's a nice option to have. Um, it does have an overboost feature, which increases torque by 8% and acceleration by 6 to 7%. Uh, the sound's enhanced by variable exhaust valve system. Um, it has, this really isn't performance, but it has on my list here. It has 8-inch free-floating uh, touch screen with the g-force meter in it and, and little pieces of technology like that I think are great uh, for cars in this price range. The engine is going to be a 2 liter turbo with 270 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque. It's going to be a front-wheel drive and a manual transmission. I don't think it is offered in an automatic um, and again that's something I, I think is totally fine. It's also going to come with either 18 inch Michelins or 19 inch Pirelli tires so you're going to have two different wheel options. I don't think either wheel option is forged but they really haven't released that detail yet. Um, the suspension is electronically controlled so it's adjustable from daily driving all the way to a track setting. Um, and then the, so yeah comfort to high performance and then there's an electronically limited slip differential. So I think that is a great idea. That's what the Focus ST is missing. Any hot hatch that has um, this type of power should absolutely have a limited slip differential and this one does. This also, this was interesting to me and it kind of tells me how serious this car could be as far as a competitor. I don't think it's anything to laugh at considering it's even their first one. Is it did 10,000 kilometers of driving on uh, the Nordschleife uh, track, the Nürburgring. So I just think, you know, if, if they're naming the N division, the logo represents a chicane, they're telling us about how great it is through the turns and all that stuff that was developed on the, at the ring. I, I just think this car could absolutely overtake the GTI, it could overtake the Focus ST, um, it could overtake, you know, who knows how good this car is going to be. So, um, who knows, it could be better than the Civic Type R. I, I doubt that, but, you know, I think the Civic Type R is in a realm of its own for front wheel drive hatches. But I'm very excited to see this thing, to drive it. Uh, you know, it, it just looks like they took all their competitors and they, they copied the good things of the car and they fixed the bad things. Uh, you know, for example, like even the steering wheel here has the perforated leather around the edges, like where your hands would go. You know, Focus ST has that. That's what a lot of people like. Um, they've done that. But it even has these different drive modes, which, which the Focus ST does not have. So you can see these little paddles here. One has the uh, drive mode on the left, and then there's like a racing checkered flag on the right. I don't know, you know, the, the technicalities behind those and, and what that means, but you know, you can assume that that's probably race mode and the other one on the left. Uh, probably switches it between comfort and the sport mode. 
even this look here at the door sill, it, it has the N, which it's a really cool logo. And when you have a, if you have a Focus ST, RS, or Fiesta, you have the ST logos or RS logos in there. So it just it looks like you know they probably bought some of the competitors' cars and just totally broke them down, did their research, and uh, and built one hell of a car. I really like that the brake pads, the red has the N logo again. Just really cool, you know. It, it's everyone, every other car has Brembo. Um, I think STI does say STI, but it's just nice to see that the cars logo on it, the manufacturer's logo. Uh, the headlights really look like a Focus ST, um, so that's that's interesting as well. But overall, I think this is great, the competition that's out there right now for hot hatches, like I listed at the beginning. You just have so many options, and because of the success starting in 2013 with the Focus ST, uh, I think it's made other manufacturers look that way. Now the GTI has been doing it for over 40 years, so I'm aware that they've been around, they still own the market, whatever, but the popularity of the ST I think has made other manufacturers uh, look for this to be an entry point uh, for performance driving, and it's interesting that they're making an entry with their end division as a hot hatch. So it's really exciting. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see as the reviews start to pop up. This is going to go for sale in, should be later this year. So later 2017 and into 20, it'll come out as a 2018 model. Um, but I'm excited to see what the price point is as well. I would also bet that the price point on this, even fully loaded, is, is under $30,000. I would bet it's, it outprices a fully loaded Focus ST. Definitely will price a, a Golf. Those can get expensive. So we, but we will just see. So I'm interested to see everyone's comments below on this, uh, what you've heard about it. I actually should have made this video a while ago, uh, but I just kind of got held up with some things. Uh, but now we have the official images and that's even better. So thank you for watching. If you're still with me, please like the video. That always helps out and we'll see you soon. I'm working on uh, two reviews, or, yeah, two reviews right now and then another like ride along video. Uh, but this Porsche video I have coming up should be pretty good. So thanks for all the support, and we'll see you soon.